I don't really know much about Robert Eggers personally. <laughs> I'd met him, a I'd love the witch and uh, I tried to meet him. I wanted to do something with him for a while before and I met him on a couple of other projects for about a year. And then uh, the I, I kept reading, and they're always really cool, the projects, but it was always playing a sort of English gentleman and I'm just quite anti <laughs> playing them. And uh, and I kind of quite flippantly said at the end of the meeting about the second project, I was saying, you know, to be honest, I only really want to do stuff that's like really weird. And um, and a few days later, he said, "Well, I've been writing this thing with my brother, which if you don't, if this isn't weird enough, I don't think I'm going to be able to get weirder than this." And uh, and I read the script and I was like, "Yeah, this is." Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. I've never had to look up so many expressions. I mean, there are expressions in the script which you couldn't even Google. Like, I mean, it was sort of the, I've never, like, what is it? Something about straighter, more crooked than a vi Virginny fence. And I was like, what is all that? I've never even heard any, like, multiple expressions and you couldn't find what they meant anywhere. And they're from some letter in, 1890 somewhere and it's like I love all that stuff so much but he has he made he had tons of um, photographs from the period and then there are a lot he'd found all these lumberjack songs which there's actually weirdly a lumberjack song playlist on Spotify <laughs> which, is like, which I've never they have like three plays <laughs> but um uh, yeah, so I was kind of wandering around listening to these lumberjack songs, which are the kind of darkest things you can imagine. And it kind of made me start thinking about the character, thinking I like this idea of this guy who's in an incredibly physical, physically demanding job, like he's essentially a manual laborer and has an incredibly delicate uh, psychological state. And... and uh, Normally, someone who's kind of having a bit of a breakdown, you normally see it from a, uh, from a kind of a kind of wealthy background, or not necessarily wealthy, but a kind of, I don't know, especially in contemporary stories, you work in an office or something, you never normally see like a lumberjack having a mental breakdown, basically. <laughs> Probably totally wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest thing for me about movies is just you're just waiting around so much and you don't really know what's coming next. And so you don't really know how to pace your energy out throughout the day. But with this, it's just, it was pretty relentless. And then every time you had to shoot something, it was like a little mini play. When I'm not reading it with the actual actor, I like reading it with someone who reads something totally flat. And because uh, it's kind of, you, you can sort of, you just have, you kind of have an understanding of the words, but you don't really know how you're going to perform them. You just, there's something about the repetition of saying something out loud that it's sort of, it's like learning a poem or something. You, if you learn a poem off by heart, you suddenly understand it on a much deeper level. What I like doing and preparing for something is just, you have multiple different ideas which you just think would be kind of fun to do in the scene. and. Uh, and also, sometimes you think about things which would be exciting for the other actor, like something which is maybe a little bit surprising, something which, so it gives them something to react to. I think it takes the pressure off yourself, thinking like, oh, I need to just be totally real in this scene, or like, I need to be perfect. If you're just thinking like, you know, it's almost like you're telling a joke, kind of, and like, you know, the element of surprise is the most exciting part to try and uh, generate. I always try and pick a job which you think, at first glance, like, like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I don't have the skill set to do it. And the further away it is from any familiarity, it's kind of more exciting. If you if you conceive it as good, but you, I mean, I generally try and pick jobs when I, I like a script, and then think like, oh, this would be really good if some other actor was doing it. <laughs> and it's kind of like, I mean. You can try and be that other actor, <laughs> this. but I mean, with um, yeah, with Willem, I mean, it's as soon as he was cast, cause I, I kind of, there's like a playfulness and like a naughtiness to all of his 
parts, even when he's playing something really dark, that it really brings something to the movie. It kind of, it, it's not so, because I mean, the, especially something like The Lighthouse, it could be, I mean, it was the script was funny, but it's also like kind of brutal and and, uh, and sort of gross in a lot of ways. And But and like, Willem's like this little like, kind of like naughty little demon. Like, <laughs> but it's kind of, uh, it's definitely, yeah. It, it, you you just realize the power that a performance can kind of you know can elevate something, and also like I just love working with somebody who's been working for so for like you know probably over thirty years doing movies and he's not jaded at all, still trying to find like interesting young directors like or people like that like he's always on the hunt for people and um, and like just loves it so much still. And uh, it's just really, really nice working with someone like that.